Education has been about taking beakers of full information in my head and pouring little bits of that information into your head mm -hmm. and asking you to regurgitate it on command to show that you have learned it. The brain is not designed for one-way communication. We have a speech production center and a speech recognition center right here on the left side, and they're wired together, and they're designed for two-way communication. So how about looking up here? So if you look near the North Pole, you can see it, it continuously. And they're designed for communication where I can see your eyes and your reactions, and I can be in a socialized environment with an interaction with you that's going to be productive. And the lecture is the opposite of that. So that, I think, is the critical mistake that most of our ed educational system is based on. What would you say is the, the main learning outcome at a school like Quest that may be different from other schools? The principal things that employers say they want is not people who write code faster or are better accountants mm -hmm. at filling in spreadsheets. They want people who can write and speak effectively and persuasively. Mm -hmm. They critically want people who can collaborate across departmental boundaries, and I'm talking about in a firm now, department, to solve problems for the company. And they want people who can think laterally and analytically and come up with creative solutions to problems. And those are the three things that our education is built around. If they don't react well to it, we have to figure out why and how we can change that. I want you to kind of understand the system around this. I want you to the secondary. So our first two years is a foundation program. In which is not designed to pour little bits of math into your head, little bits of physics into your head, little bits of sociology into your head, little bits of, of English into your head. They're designed to illustrate by having a passionate PhD professor in the classroom how a mathematician views the world, asks questions about the world, and then goes about trying to answer them. And how a physicist does that, and how a sociologist does that, and how a historian does that, and how a poet does that because they're very different perspectives on the world. Our goal at the undergraduate level is to have every student with the same degree, a Bachelor of Arts and Sciences degree that has been exposed to these different habits of mind and learned how to focus them on a single interdisciplinary question that's of interest and value to them personally, which inevitably more closely mirrors questions that people have to deal with in the real world outside of academia. Doing away with traditional degrees and letting students create their own questions. Uh, what have you learned from the type of questions they come up with? Well, we do have a cadre of students who instinct is to save the world. And a lot of what our education is about is teaching them that that's not a very useful goal to have. It's useful to be able to find problems, that is to frame questions, and then think about how you can make progress on that question. The questions tend to be interdisciplinary, but some of them are very broad and some of them are very focused. The business model of a lot of our universities are built on big class sizes, not 20 student seminars. Um, how realistic is it for other schools, you think, to adopt some of the approaches that you have here? Well, if you look at the student-faculty ratio here and the student-faculty ratio at some of the big leading research universities, it's not terribly different. So really, it's a matter of priorities and the deployment of resources as to what you want to do. There aren't very many stars. These are stars. The things were points. See, they're very few. Now, some of the techniques we use, like I did today, could be done in a 100-student classroom. There's no reason we couldn't configure the classroom to have four or five people sitting around 20 different tables and working on a computer simulation or something like that that lets them understand how to extract information from observations of the world and build generalizable models of that that they can employ in other actions. We have to engage students in the process of learning. You could achieve that in much larger classrooms if you change the mindset of what the purpose is. It's not to have them, it's not an answer-driven curriculum it's a process-driven curriculum. What about majors? Should universities do away with majors and let students design their own learning? I think we need, especially in Canada, a much broader array of options for students. The, it's the similarity of all the major public universities that's the problem. And so, no, I think there are some people who at 18, maybe, 
know exactly what they want to do for the rest of their lives and can go and get trained to do that in four years. But there should also be places where people can go without knowing exactly what they want to do for the rest of their lives and have their minds opened up to different perspectives on the world, equipped with different intellectual tools, taught how to collaborate and communicate and be made more effective people, more effective citizens and more effective parts of the economy.